This is gonna be a day when you stand in the heart You can be the greatest, you can be the best You can be the king, come Ooh, lay it on your chest You can be the name. one, you can be the one Ooh, You can talk to God, go lay it on For the months of May and June, we'll be giving away 50,000 IOST tokens, along with three Ledger Nanos, two of them sponsored by Nimic, and one special edition Ledger Nano with an on-the-go kit. Winners announced July 1st to enter. Make sure to subscribe, like, and comment on every video in May and June for your maximum number of entries. BitSquad, welcome back to the channel. Tomorrow morning, I am leaving for LA. I will be gone for 11 days. I do have some content for you guys next week, along with some live videos I'll be doing with Beards and Bitcoins and from the Crypto BitBus uh, that I'll be taking part in this week. Really excited about it. Hope to have a lot of content for you guys while I'm gone on top of the planned content I already have. So today, we're going to be talking about Bitcoin over $10,000. We're also going to be talking about, is there hope for altcoins amidst the Bitcoin run. So we're going to take a look at that along with some security tips. So let's go ahead and jump into the markets. Market watch. Bitcoin is running. Where will it stop? No one knows. We've picked up about $1,000 overnight, uh, coming in at 7.8% gains. This could be the last time we ever see under 10,000. There's a distinct possibility of that. We may dip, but honestly, I don't see it happening. Uh, you kind of look at these charts and things are just feeling great right now. Uh, so we look at the biggest winners of the day. We got Insight Chain, Educare, Dent, Monocoin, and Hedge Trade. Biggest loser of the day, Solve. Really the only big loser, Noel, Zillica, VeChain, and Icon with some somewhat significant losses. Uh, if we look at the market cap, you'll see we're over $316 billion, guys. The last time this happened, we went from $300 billion to $600 billion in basically, I think, one month, somewhere around there. So, uh, But Bitcoin dominance is rising, which doesn't sound good for alts. We're going to take a look at why there may be some hope for alts in the short term here in a minute. It's time for the fresh five top news stories of the day, starting with number five. All right, guys, so just want to give you guys a little, you know, overview of what I'm going to be doing this coming week when I'm not here making news videos. I'm out there doing real crypto stuff, guys. Uh, so first we have the crypto bit bus that I'm going to be on, uh, presented by Crow's Nest Exchange. Thank you to uh, Crypto Crow for being on the show last night. Uh, it's just your favorite crypto friends, me, Omar, uh, Wendy, uh, Brecky, Mark Moss, Ryan Calder, Stash, Ken Bozak, Young Dumb Crypto, uh, uh, Kai Primo, Gaston Cruz, Austin. You got to love that guy's hair. And of course, your boy, Jay Chains. So we're going to be taking a bus. We got, you know, 50 people riding with us. We're going to be going from Los Angeles, which I'm flying into tomorrow, to San Francisco for the Bitcoin 2019 conference. Uh, which will be really fun, guys. I think it'll be, uh, you know, a good event. There's a lot of Bitcoin maximalists there, so they'll be having their heyday and really, really excited and things like that. The Edward Snowden will be speaking. I assume that will be from live stream. I don't think he will actually be there in the present. I think he would be arrested if that was the case. But uh, yeah, really excited. Um, oh, Crypto.com is going to be there. That'll be cool. I need to talk to them. Um, Lolly is a sponsor. Several, uh, several things I've covered on the channel and things like that. So CNBC is going to be there. So obviously they're going to want to talk to me. Everyone knows that. I may try to dress up or something. So um, that's not true. I'll wear a t-shirt. You guys know me. But uh, yeah, so it's going to be really fun, really exciting. And then at the end of the week on Wednesday night, I'm flying to Las Vegas. I'm going to be playing in the World Series of Poker. So if you guys are going to be in Las Vegas at that time, make sure to hit me up and, you know, I'll take your money. That'll be really cool. So uh, all right, guys, let's move on to the next story. Number four. All right, guys, so as the price of crypto continues to go up, of course, Bitcoin, if you bought in December, uh, then think about it, you've tripled your money. And, you know, actually more than that if you bought at the bottom. And this is a time where a lot of people might want to brag about how much crypto they have or how much they bought. And there may be people asking you, hey, how much Bitcoin do you own? When did you buy it? What price did you get it at? How much do you have? What other coins do you have? And, you know, this is a time where I really feel like it's important to educate people on people want to steal your money. They want to take your money. They want to hack your account. 
They might even want to hold a knife up to you and steal your hardware wallets. I mean, that's a real thing that has happened before. Um, you know, I know it's kind of scary. I'm not trying to scare you guys, but it, especially for newer people coming into the space, as, as this takes off more and more, and we start talking about people might have bought 20 Bitcoin when it was at $3,100, and now all of a sudden, you know, we, Bitcoin goes over $100,000, and now you've got millions of dollars. It can be a scary thing, guys, trying to keep your crypto safe. But remember, at all times, don't brag about how much crypto you have. Uh, this was from Binance put this out. Uh, bragging about your crypto funds makes you an easy target for cyber thieves. If you're talking about crypto online, make sure the social media accounts you use don't reveal where you hold funds. And I think that's really important, guys. So I've, is the price is going up. That's one reason why I kind of have withdrawn some of our other segments because I don't want to be advertising where I have crypto ad, obviously, and you guys shouldn't either. Number three. In news that most people might consider shocking, there's more evidence Craig Wright is not Satoshi. I know it's really scary to think about uh, that we've been living a lie for so long here. Uh, Craig Wright reportedly failed to submit court-ordered Bitcoin wallet addresses. Uh, so in a lawsuit between him and Dave Kleiman, who has passed away, it's really against his estate or his estate versus Craig Wright. Uh, he was ordered to submit a uh, list of his old Bitcoin addresses, which would have basically been like the Genesis, uh, you know, Bitcoin Genesis addresses and things like that. Of course, he doesn't have them. So Craig Wright hasn't complied with the court's order to list his Bitcoin as of 12 31 13. Remains under an order to show why Jay Reinhardt shouldn't issue sanctions under R37 and order him to appear before Jay Bloom and explain why he shouldn't be held in contempt. And of course, Peter McCormack had a lot of stuff to say about it. <laughs> um, if you guys don't know, Craig Wright is also, you know, suing uh, Peter McCormack for slander for saying he's not who he's really not. I know it's so confusing to keep up with, but just, you know, another story about, you know, this psychopath. He's a psychopath. He's a, he's a, you know, pathological liar. And it's really scary what someone like this is capable of when it comes to lying, especially when he has this much money uh, you know, to be able to throw frivolous lawsuits around and things like that. But, you know, just definitely another strike against this loser. Number two. All right, guys. So before we move on to talking about Bitcoin over 10K and, and what this really means for crypto, I thought it was important to give a little hopium, right? We've been talking about hopium about Bitcoin. Let's talk about hopium about altcoins. Uh, so when we look at the last few cycles here, going back to 2012-ish, you look at what happened before we went on these massive runs. Uh, you know, you have the run up from the bottom, which, you know, you can look at this cycle and this cycle and see uh, when that occurred. Then you have the reaccumulation, the ranging, which during this case, you know, alts would do pretty well. And you can see right here where this happened in 2012. You can see the green box where this happened in 2016. And now you can see this where we are right now. And I think this kind of fits because, you know, a lot of people have said we're going to go from 10,000 to 40,000 in just a couple months. The way that I see it, I feel like really once we're over 10,000, we might see a stabilization um, for a short period of time, maybe one to two months. We could also see a lot of FOMO and push the price up to 20,000 by next month. I mean, I guess that's, you know, possible. But I do think that if you're in a stage where you're thinking like, okay, I've kind of missed out. I need to accumulate altcoins right now would be the time to do it. Now, even if Bitcoin does go on a massive run, you know, the altcoins are probably going to not move very much for, you know, during that run until people feel confident that Bitcoin's going to slow down enough for them to take profits out to put them in altcoins. But, you know, I definitely had somebody from the Bit Squad ask me, like, what do I do? I've got all these altcoins. Don't be scared. The altcoins are going to do well. It may be a while before it happens, but if you guys were not around in 2017, you don't understand that these projects would, they would go up 35X in a month. You know, like it, it would happen so quickly when it happened. So don't give up on your altcoins. I can't give you financial advice, of course, but don't give up on your altcoins. I still believe that altcoins are gonna do very well over the next one to two years. And, you know, I, I think you don't wanna miss out because you know what's gonna happen. You're gonna sell your altcoins and you know what's gonna happen? the next day they're gonna pump and then you're gonna be pissed. So don't do that, you know, be smart, hodl your altcoins, definitely try to get more Bitcoin if you can get more Bitcoin during this time. But uh, you know, I definitely think that this is a time where, you know, you should definitely not sell all of your holdings 
for Bitcoin because you want to stay diversified, in my opinion. Hold up. It's time for an iOS tea break. And speaking of alt-hopium, how about we do some iOS tea hopium? Uh, so we recently, with iOS tea, had the mainnet token burn. Uh, they just burned 123.8 million ERZ20 tokens. Now, if you're newer to crypto, because I'm assuming we're probably going to have a lot of newer people coming in, what a token burn is, is when you have an altcoin that starts on one blockchain and then moves to its own blockchain. And because of that, all the old tokens have to be burned because there are new tokens that come with a new blockchain. Now, there are other reasons that the companies or crypto projects might do a coin burn or a token burn, but that is really one of the more popular ones. Uh, you do have some that intentionally burn their tokens to increase the value, but that's a whole different issue. So, you know, if you were wondering like how you do a token swap, it's very easy. All you would do is you would go to your exchange like uh, Binance, Huobi, OKX, Bitthumb, Upbit, Big One, BIS, and several others. And you would basically deposit your ERC-20 IOST. And then when you withdrew, you would be withdrawing the new token. So um, they have a record of all of the token burns. Uh, this would have been the seventh round of the token burns. Um, not a hundred percent, uh, percent, not a hundred percent, not a hundred percent sure if there are still more left. I believe there are, uh, several left, but you know, if you're looking for an altcoin that has a lot of potential, definitely IOST is that altcoin. You guys know I love it. The number one crypto story of the day. All right, guys, we got a story here for you. Very simple. This image says it all. Bitcoin over $10,000. We're heading towards 11 right now. Now, what does this mean? It's a big moment for those of us that have grinded through this bear market. We've been on the up ever since the uh, you know end of last year, and now this feels like redemption. We've been telling you guys that sometime during this year, we were gonna start moving back up and people were gonna get excited about crypto again and people were gonna get excited about Bitcoin. I have all kinds of people asking me questions right now, not on the interwebs, in real life that's how you know the people are coming back and i think that this bitcoin 2019 conference is going to be a great time for bitcoin to display its power its beauty uh you know its innovation everything that we love about crypto so i'm super excited to be going to this conference while this is pumping i'm sure when i'm at the wsop i'm sure we will hear or i'll get a lot of questions about crypto because i'll be wearing crypto stuff there obviously i'm a walking billboard for bitcoin but uh you know it, it's not too late if you feel like you missed out, it's not too late. This is but a sample of where we are going to be going with Bitcoin. We have not seen anything yet, guys. Like I talked about earlier, the last time we were at 300 billion in market cap, it doubled in I believe about one month. And when this thing hits, it's gonna hit fast, it's gonna hit hard, and it's gonna hit strong. But I, I do wanna point out, I do feel like this bull market that we are heading into right now, it's gonna be different than the last bull market we were on. The last bull market in 2017, we saw the excitement kind of collide with the parabolic move of Bitcoin. But I believe that right now what we're gonna see is we're gonna see a more prolonged excitement. I don't think that Bitcoin is ready to bust it right now. I think it may move up quickly, but the height of where this is going is much different than where we were in 2017. A lot of people have been asking what my target is. You know, where do I believe the ceiling is for Bitcoin? And honestly, my number is 333,000. I've given you guys many times on the channel why I believe $333,000 is the target for Bitcoin, but it's not going to be uh, quick. It's going to take a while to get there. We will have, you know, many peaks, many valleys, but I think by 2021, by the end of that year, or the, about the middle of the year, I think we will see the peak to the bull market. We will see a, at least six figures, guys. My minimum target is six figures for this next run. I don't see any way around it. It's definitely gonna happen. We got the institutional FOMO. The retail FOMO is gonna come later. People are already educated about Bitcoin. We got huge companies like Facebook getting into crypto. That is launching. LibraCoin's launching at the beginning of next year. I told you guys a lot why. You know, at first I was very hesitant, but I actually think LibraCoin is going to be good for Bitcoin and the whole crypto world. So guys, the sky is really the limit right now. The, there is, there's nowhere right now that you can look at a target and say, oh, once we get here, I feel like I need to sell and get out. Now you have, may have many targets if you're trading on the way up, 
But for me personally, I'm gonna hodl through this. And I think by the end of this, a lot of people that are watching this video, a lot of people in the Bit Squad, I think we're gonna be in a totally different place financially than we were when this started. So you guys buckle up. It's coming, it's gonna hit hard, and I know I am super excited about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is the last news video you guys will get from me for several, several days, not until probably Tuesday, July 2nd. That's probably when I'll get back in the swing of making videos. So make sure you guys, you know, stay strong during that time. You guys can send me messages on Telegram, join my Bit Squad Telegram group. Till then, BitBoy out.